Hi, um, today I want to talk about uh, something on ASP.NET which is called middlewares. Uh, middlewares. <laughs> See, so um, I decided to do that because uh, I recently used middlewares a lot and I recognized that um, some of my colleagues at my company don't even know what this is, what it's doing, they see it regularly and so I thought it would be a good idea to share this with you guys. And um, I will start with a little introduction this time and I've prepared some slides or one slide actually. And if you want to skip this, feel free. I will have um, the uh, video uh, skip points in YouTube uh, implemented. You can skip it for sure if you are already familiar with middleware and just want to have a look at how I implement middlewares. I will show this in the second part in the practical stuff. So. With that uh, said, I think we're ready to go to hop over to my screen and to start with the introduction to middlewares. So let me do this. Um, and I think my, um, yeah, that's, that's how we do it. I think my, um, uh, my screen is uh, visible now to you. And um, let's see, I just uh, started by or I, I thought about starting with some maybe explanation in a visual form what a middleware is and how it fits to ASP.NET, kind of. As you see here, I'm omitting a lot of stuff, um, details. Um, it's not, uh, you know, precise, but it gives you an idea. Okay, that's, that's what it's all about. Okay, um, let's do it. So first of all, what comes in, uh, let me go here, is an HTTP request coming in from somewhere and hitting your web server. This is the first part. This is not uh, in your under your control. It's just the web server software sitting on, <coughs> sorry, on a computer uh, and um, receiving a request regularly on port 443 if it's HTTPS and there it is. So if you are using ASP.NET Core, something similar to what I showed now will happen. On this web server, there's a .NET runtime installed and the web server starts a process hosting your website and then the .NET runtime kicks in. I just left it here for the sake of uh, completeness. Uh, so the .NET runtime is the base for ASP.NET um, uh, running. ASP.NET is um, kind of uh, sits on the process. Uh, this is what you configure in your startup, um, telling it, okay, this is uh, what um, uh, is reacting kind of to the web server request using the .NET runtime. And now the request is um, um, handed through, if you will, to ASP.NET. So a lot of things happens there. We will come to this later. And at some point in time, this green one is your source code, which you actually see, not your source code, but the, you know, the thing that runs, which you programmed. And usually we have some route hitting a controller, whatever. And then this request arrives, if you will. This is the first time where you can put a breakpoint if you debug it locally and you see the request coming in. So the question is, why did I have so much space here in between? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Um, oh, wait a minute. Of course, as you can see, those arrows are double arrows. So the request comes in in this direction and then it goes out and it leads to an HTTP response usually of some kind, just for the sake of completeness. Okay, let's zoom in to this area because this is interesting. Something uh, is provided by ASP.NET. So when the request comes in, you have to imagine that it's not just passed to your controller, um, it is handled. Depending on some default configuration in ASP.NET, which you cannot access at the front. And then maybe, to be honest, I don't even know if that is true. Maybe at the end of all of this is even stuff you can't access with just injecting something. But the main point here is that there is an area in ASP.NET, where when you configure your app, you can decide to put middlewares in it. And that's why they are called middlewares, because they sit in between the stuffs you cannot access, as if you will. It's not the reason why they're called middleware, to be honest, but you know, it's a kind of a mind bridge to um, keep this in mind. So what happens here is 
um, I didn't bother to uh, put this in the presentation, sorry for this. But what happens, the request comes in and it's only happening when the request comes in, okay? So what, what I'm targeting today. So it comes in and then it gets handled by some stuff you cannot access. And then you can, if you want, inject middleware, which means the request and the HTTP context is provided to your code inside of a middleware. I'll show you how to do it. You can handle it and you at any point here can decide to reject the request and then do something like 500, 400 or whatever and uh, kind of uh, provide a possibility to not handle this HTTP request further down the line and thus pro uh, prohibiting it from hitting your controller but answering to the caller that you don't accept this kind of request. There are <clears throat> kind of middlewares you probably know like for, uh, for instance the authorization middleware of ASP.NET. So if you go there and uh, use your startup configuration in your ASP.NET to uh, say I want to have authorization in place then all you do is you inject basically in this area here more or less you inject the already programmed by other people middleware into this pipeline if you will and saying that if the request is not authorized and the controller wants it to be authorized or the method then ensure that it's not hitting my route if the condition is not met. So that's basically the idea. That's what we call middleware and it sounds pretty complicated but if you keep in mind it's just components that you can tell ASP.NET to use to when the pre-processing of the request happens before it hits your controller then this is kind of the the picture in your head which helps you to understand what a middleware is. I hope so at least. Okay, with that said, let's hop over and try to implement a middleware. Okay, this is now the second part where we go to practice. So in order to do this I will start from scratch. So I will share this code on GitHub and put the link into the description. So what we do is we go to .NET new web API and let's call it ASP.NET Core middleware here in my projects. Let's create a blank web API project. Let's go to ASP.NET Core middleware. This is what uh, happens as you might know. And now let's try to uh, open this in writer this, this time ASP.NET Core middleware CS project and uh, let's see what comes up. <clears throat> Let me close a little bit of my stuff. So maybe this is a good time to talk about what the demo will be of. There it is. So what I want to do with my middleware, I will check requests, not for authorization, for other stuff. I will show you what I do. Uh, there are projects where I use this a lot um, and I will show you then what this is doing. So first of all, we need to get rid of all of this weather forecast stuff. Let's do this. Yeah, delete it. And then uh, also the controller, maybe delete it. Um, controller base API controller and route is all we need. So I'm doing this on web API because you know it removes all this clutter of visible elements and whatever. Okay, cool. So the key point here is uh, we have our program. Let's clean this up a little bit so that you can see what's going on. Ba -ba -da. We don't need this stuff. I hate space or empty lines. So that's it. Okay, cool. So this is pretty basic stuff. So what I will introduce first of all is a new controller. Uh, this is my sample controller. Let's say it is, don't do it. It is uh, implementing from or inheriting from controller base and it's doing uh, it is an API controller and the route is uh, let's say uh, not controller I don't like it API controller so basically that's what it is what's going on I think this way okay and let's implement public um, action result uh, just simple as that a get request what's going on action result get request return okay that's it uh, and it is exposed via HTTP get 
Okay, so let's uh, now try it out. Let's run this thing and see what's happening. If it's building and stuff. Okay, it looks good. Swagger is opening and there it is. So I will leave this uh, window open uh, so it's easier for us to uh, check it, stop my program and go to my properties, a little trick and set this, uh, what the, I don't want IS, oh, come on, um, I don't want uh, IS Express and I only want HTTPS uh, and uh, let's do it this way. This is Kestrel starting up and let's do launch browser faults so that it's not always starting a browser with me. So let's see. Now we take, yeah, he, he is using this and that's it. Now we're ready to go. And now we talk about middleware. So what I want to achieve, let's say, let's build up a sample. What I want to achieve is um, that I want to ensure that in every request that comes in, certain headers are present. This is a pretty common example for middlewares. Uh, so what, what, what are headers for in this request? So for instance, I want to ensure that the clients talking to my API always send their, let's say, culture in a header. So that's it. If they don't send a culture, I want the request don't even hit my controllers. So that is what I want a middleware for. So let's start. So first of all, first step is I add a directory and I call it middlewares for obvious reasons. So what I do is I create a class and I name it something reasonable. Let's say uh, culture header check middleware, whatever. So um, that is it. And the trick, the first trick is to know, you have to know this, that in order to be this type, the class gets compiled to type, to be uh, a middleware, what you need, you need, need to implement the iMiddleware interface, which is coming from Microsoft ASP.NET Core. So this is built in, okay? So what this wants from you, it wants you to implement um, exactly one method, that's all. This is one of those interfaces which is pretty simple and it says, you know what, I am here and I have this one method uh, which is uh, saying um, invoke async and because it's iMiddleware, ASP.NET later knows what to do with that if we configure it correctly and to call this method invoke async uh, whenever it's uh, appropriate. Okay. Let's do it then and uh, let's do the following. What we get here is, and let's maybe remove the async, but we need to um, let it be a task. So what we want to do is we see we get the HTTP context. Let me zoom a little bit and the next or the pointer, if you will, to the next uh, step in this pipeline. So what we want to do is we want to check um, or let's say, let's start simple. Let's just reject every request. So what we can do is context. Um, I have to, uh, I have to check this. Wait a minute. Um, uh, context response status code is let's say 400 and context response, uh, write as in. Oh, let's do this and we can, that's good. Right async, I don't talk to you, which is pretty senseless. Okay, we should, we should see here a pattern emerging because if we inject this into the middleware, so this is not checking culture, it's just showing you what's going on. Okay, now that we have this middleware, what we should use is first step, we need to configure it. And there are two things you need to do. First of all, when building your services, you need to register this middleware services. So, and what I want to do, I will make it transient um, and I will call this the culture header check middleware. So this line now um, tells the dependency injection 
of ASP.NET Core. Uh, hey guy, if somebody, some internal process wants a culture header check middleware, just provide it one, please, and uh, make it transient so every request for this middleware instance gets a fresh instance. Okay, that's that. And then when we're done, uh, app use middleware, thank you, um, Copilot. App use middleware is the thing telling the um, application we are building that this middleware should be injected. Um, wait a second, do I have my PowerPoint still open? Uh, where is it? Uh, PowerPoint, the last one. Uh, where is it? Uh, middleware. So this line here, uh, let me bring in my PowerPoint again, uh, ensures that this happens. So in this area, in this green one, our middleware is injected. So this is what this line does. The line above is just uh, ensuring that this middleware um, can be uh, found by ASP.NET. So let's try it out. Run this thing and I'm not debugging, I'm just running. And let's see what's going on. Let's go back to Swagger and let's try it out. And let's see if this works and uh, failed to fetch. That's interesting. Did I, is it started already? Um, I don't even know. Uh, let's maybe, uh, wait a second, which port? 44355? Am I missing a port here? It is this one, that's why. Okay, I switch the configuration, thank you, and then execute, and I get 400. So to ensure that you're understanding what's going on, if I just remove this line, and not injecting the middleware, debug, let's debug this time, uh, and I'm re-executing this, it's still doing it, I get 200 as a response, okay, nice. If I re-inject this, stop my program and set a breakpoint here in my middleware and then execute, oh, then debug it. First of all, wait for it. And let's say now I execute this. What's happening is I get a breakpoint here. So uh, important point is I get a breakpoint before my controller is even hit. And my controller, let me add a breakpoint here never gets called because this middleware is injected no matter what. Okay, nice. So 400, now we know our middleware is working. Okay, but that is a poor implementation. The next part is, let's check for this header. Um, uh, this is interesting. <laughs> and uh, he is um, uh, saying accept language and let's say, this is too much, uh, let's say culture, uh, if culture is null. Um, so this means no culture header present. Okay, that's what this means. And uh, GPT already or Copilot already did a lot of stuff for me here. I will explain this later. Um, if it's not null, uh, so let's say what if it is now. So that means now this is invalid. Okay. Context um, uh, request um, response, of course, response result uh, response. What was it? Uh, let me put this. I always forget this status code. Thanks. Status code. And there is an enumeration somewhere and I always don't remember what it is. That's why I'm doing simple here. And let's say this is an invalid request. Let's go 400. Uh, context response, um, write async and um, await this, which is, um, let's say, um, write async. And there is a better method to do this. Uh, I am context. Or is was their response fail? No, there was some fail uh, probability, but I think I, I miss um, I, I mix it. Okay, right here, huh? culture header is missing. Okay, let's do it this way. So now uh, we are we getting problems because we cannot inject, or we can, but it's too complicated uh, headers here. So let me put out uh, this URL. 
And let's open Postman for trying this out. And let me clean up Postman a little bit so that you don't see all my other requests. Close all, don't save, uh, don't save. Let's do a new request. So here we are. So this is what we're going to do. Oh, uh, anyways. So let's put in uh, the URL. It's a simple GET request, no matter what. And let's see, let's debug our application. Okay. And maybe put it side by side that you can see what's happening in the back. API sample sent. And uh, he is hitting the OK, which is not what I expected it to do. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a common mistake I did. So I'm sending the response. Let's see. I'm sending the response, but I'm calling this line too because I'm not returning. So let's see. Let me just do it and then let's add a return statement here. Let's debug it again and let's see if we get 400 because we don't or we don't send. Uh, let's see. We get 400 bad requests. Kacha header is missing. That's exactly what we wanted to have. Let's do the probe, let's do culture, and let's do XXX or whatever, which is uh, pretty dumb, but he's accepting it now and we get 200, okay, that's nice. Okay, so let's go a little bit further to make the sample a little bit real. Uh, let's go, uh, try, and I'm not even sure, the client culture equals new, and I'm not sure is there a static method culture info. No, let's try it. new culture info uh, culture. So, and if the exception is happening, then what we do is again here uh, invalid culture provided. So that's another error, another 400 is something weird. So, and then we have this one uh, is a pretty dumb check, I think, to check it out. And then if the exception's happening on this line, we want to skip out. So let's re-debug this. And now I expect it to fail when I provide XX, hopefully. No, it, XX is actually true. Uh, what is with this? Yeah, invalid culture provided. Now we have a culture with invalid culture. You see the pattern emerging, okay? So, pretty good. Now we know by simply injecting this, now we know that um, uh, this is checking every request. So at this point in time, when we hit the controller here, we can simply say the culture um, is request headers culture first so default um, so basically uh, thank you and then we can return uh, the culture here let's say this way this request um, and uh, let's see what's happening uh, action result maybe of string empty so this way it's you know be precise <laughs> that's the message here okay cool mm. Okay, send it, invalid culture, don't send it, culture heading missing, send it with my culture, which is this one. Okay, cool, DEDE. -E. And now um, what we can do is uh, do the sample stuff. Um, if uh, uh, culture is not null, no, 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 this is string is null or empty culture. If not, then um, return, okay, let's do it this way. New culture info, um, culture um, display name, and return um, that request, could not read or no, parse culture, which should not happen because of our header, but you know what I mean. 
uh, debug this and see if I get the display name of my culture in the result. If I execute this, let's go. And this is what it is. That is the display name of my culture. Um, and if I send something else, let's say ENUS, this is English. And in, in my current culture, it says not United States, but Vereinigte Staaten. This is what you call it in Germany, United States. If you didn't know, now you know. So, um, cool. I could stop here, but uh, there's some, you know, a little flaw here. Because now what I say is, because I injected this um, into the middleware, I injected it, it gets executed every time for every request. So now the point here is, what if I only have certain methods or controllers where I want this to be applied, this middleware? For instance, as you might know, the authorized attribute of ASP.NET, the built-in attribute, um, is explicitly set, if you wanted to, on different controllers or single methods to say, I want this method or this all methods in this controller to be authorized. And if somebody is not authorized, skip it. But other methods and other parts could be unauthorized. Why should I do it? For instance, if you configure a health check so that some system can have heartbeat checks on your API, you don't want to return your middleware 400 because this system isn't sending um, isn't sending the culture because it will not send the culture um, probably so that is why you should not stop at this point uh, so I show you how to do it so what you if you want a clean approach what you need is an attribute so what is an attribute let me show you let's create a new folder and let's call it attributes nice let's create a new class, which is uh, check uh, culture attribute. So first of all, you should do yourself a favor and uh, adhere to Microsoft um, um, .NET um, uh, guidelines, which says if you provide an attribute, you need to inherit it from the class attribute and it should have a suffix of the name attribute, same as in controller. Then what you need to provide is an attribute usage which tells .NET on which elements this attribute can be applied. So what we want to uh, have here is it's possible on a class and on a method. So by saying this, what now happens? I, I did not, uh, I, I don't even have logic here. It's just a claim. I am an attribute, it says nothing. What we uh, call this, this is a flag attribute. It tells, it tells us nothing, okay? It's just a class sitting around and um, inheriting from another class. Okay, that's it. That's all you need. So now what you can do, for instance, on your controller, you can apply this attribute. And let's assume you would have some property, string foo. So now in C Sharp, attributes are applied. This is attribute, this is an attribute. So what you can do is you can add the check culture attribute and watch what happens. It omits the name part attribute on the end and just leaves check culture there. So this is cool. This is our attribute. Okay, so .NET understands that this is ours. So and then API controller is the same, by the way. Somebody else wrote this attribute, API controller attribute. It's a class you can go to, but on applying it, or the route attribute basically is the same, on applying it to something, it just tells you uh, that this something uh, has this attribute on it now. So cool. Um, that is basically a step one. And we cannot apply the attribute to this. This gives an error because this is a property. And we told the attribute to be apl applicable only to classes or methods. That was our attribute usage. Attribute <laughs> decorating our class. So that's what you do. So it's just a class. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's remove this. So why? How can we um, use this now? And now let's uh, go over to um, uh, this step. Okay, um, so um, 
what should we do? We go to our middleware here. <clears throat> okay, and then what we can um, use is a feature built into .NET, which is called the I endpoint feature. So what do you do? You go here and say um, endpoint uh, feature equals uh, context features get, and then it's like dependency injection, I endpoint feature, bear with me. Um, and then if this happens, then we just please need the endpoint. So that's step one. And what you can do with this endpoint feature is var attribute equals um, endpoint feature. Uh, if you have one, go to your metadata and then uh, get metadata. And I need to know if you have the check culture attribute uh, here. And then let's hit a breakpoint here. So that's all. Two lines, first of all. Um, go to debug mode. And then just call your endpoint. And what happens is attribute here. So endpoint feature is something. Obviously, he got it from the context the endpoint feature that's there and the attribute is null. Okay, so let's go over to our sample controller to this get method and say, you know what, check culture. Let's re-execute until this breakpoint now our program. Come on, let's execute it. Breakpoint is it and attribute now is an instance. So what this endpoint uh, feature gives us is it looks into the details, implementation details of our endpoint, which is our route or the, the method in the controller. And it gives us metadata, in this case, information, if we want to, about this thing. And one of the uh, metadata we can retrieve, we can ask it, is there an attribute applied to the method? Um, decor uh, decorating this method. And what we can say is, if attribute is null, and then this kicks in, which I promised to explain, which we already saw at the bottom here. So what this is doing is, um, there is no attribute for culture check uh, present in the current context, which means, Proceed. So this is what this means. Proceed in the pipeline. Don't do anything. Um, so uh, this says ignore this complete stuff. You don't need to do it because the caller did not apply the check culture attribute. We don't have to check the culture. In other words, you can go on with the next in pipeline. So what do I mean by next? So next means, let me bring in this. We are here. This is all middleware. And calling await next for give passing in the context gives him um, the, the call to execute the next middleware, which is injected in this area, or if there is none coming on, go over to this area and then pass it away. So this is what we can do. Okay, nice. Um, so let's try it out. So that means now if there is an attribute, he will check it. And if there's no attribute, he won't check it. So let's uh, take this in. We already saw this. Let's apply it here. Okay, let's debug this. Now we applied it on the controller, not on every method, which is very convenient. And if we call it without our culture attribute, it is still saying culture header missing and it's accepting the culture saying again, English finding statt. So, but, if we omit this attribute simply at this point, just go away. We still have the middleware in place, but every time the middleware gets called, it says, I don't have anything to do. Now it has. Um, now let's pass in could not pass culture, which is interesting. Now it's, this is coming from our controller. Okay. So this is okay. It gives 400, but this time we're coming from the controller and this is this thing coming in saying, well, I didn't get a culture. The culture is empty or whatever. And so I cannot do it. So he's never reaching this okay part. That's it. So this is very, very simple. And let me go back to my middleware here. 
This is not very complicated, if you're honest. So this is just simple if then else or whatever. Of course, the checks inside of it could be or could get uh, complicated pretty soon, um, depending on what you do. So last word on this. If you think this through, this culture check is pretty easy. Okay, so but there could be complicated checks. For instance, what we re what we regularly do, we um, just receive, let's say, um, a bearer token inside of a request. We um, take the bearer token, check if the user behind the bearer token exists in the database, and if not, then we create it. So this kind of middleware can pretty quickly get uh, messy for two reasons. First of all. It might take a long time to execute this middleware. And if you have long running operations here, as you can assume, um, that will slow down your requests pretty, pretty fast. So be very careful. The second thing which um, a lot of people don't consider is it matters in which order you are adding middlewares to the pipeline. Let me again bring in this uh, chart here. Um, so let's say in this sample, oh, thank you Windows for doing this to me. Let's say you have three custom middlewares in, in your code. So now it matters in which order you add middlewares to, um, to your pipeline. And by the way, it also matters if you, or in which order you apply the others like, uh, where is it, app use authorization. So um, let's uh, talk about this. So what this says, if there is no culture header, um, we are, or uh, what is it? If a culture header is explicitly demanded by adding uh, the tag to the controller and it's not present in the request, he will never had a hit authentication. That is what this says. On the other hand, this means he will always execute the authentication middleware first and then he will check the header attribute. Meaning that uh, even if you on authentication know that you will reject the request if there is no header, you will still perform authentication, which might be senseless. So uh, on the other side, you might want this in this order uh, so that people who are not authenticated or let's say authorized to access your API are not getting this culture is not valid thing. Depends on, that's what I mean. But important stuff is order matters here. You cannot do it in random order, you can, but then it's a question of luck. Okay, this is important. Let me redo it. So uh, here you can see, we first have authorization, there it is, and then middleware. So might be, that we need to put our middleware here after we ensure that it's uh, coming into HTTPS, but maybe not. Why should I wait for redirecting it to HTTPS? Why not going to inject my middleware for culture header in the first place because it's an easy exit. You know what I mean? So uh, this is basically it. Uh, that is what I wanted you to show. And of course, um, as always, Please give me feedback if I could have done it better or if something is not so well understandable. I will share, I think, um, uh, the source code and not the picture because it's part of my video. So I hope this was interesting for you guys. Um, appreciate that you um, attended here and um, yeah, have a nice day.